everyone. I wanted to give you a review of the Razer Pro 17 2019 model um, for music production. I've been using it for a month and a half now and I thought I'd give you the pros and cons on using the Razer as a, um, a music workstation. Okay, so here's Cubase loaded on the um, Razer Pro 17. Um, first of all, I wanted to discuss why I decided on the Razer over other laptops. Um, one of the main reasons was it's a 17 inch screen. I needed portability, obviously with a, um, a desktop workstation it's much easier for audio production, you get much better um, audio performance, but I needed something that I can take around to sessions and stuff and record. Um, so one of the reasons was it was a bigger screen, that wasn't the main factor for me, but that was a bonus. Um, probably the main reason was with the um, the 19, 2019 model, which this is, it still comes with USB ports. In fact, we've got two um, USB, standard USB on the left hand side and one on the right. You've also got an SD card reader full size. Um, it's got plenty of ports in there if you want to use it. And unfortunately with Cubase, for me anyway, some people like the dongle, but it, it uses this copy protection key, so you still need the standard USB. And I also use um, RME audio interfaces at the moment, and with RME, at the moment, they are also USB, the standard USB, rather than USB-C. I know um, everything is moving across to USB-C, but at the moment, it made sense for me to have the USB, the standard connector. Okay, then the other main factor was, um, actually upgradability. It came as standard with a 512 M.2 hard drive and 16 gig of RAM, but I can get 64 gig of RAM in this and I can also have two M.2 hard drives. So what I've done first off in the first two weeks of getting it, I put a one terabyte um, Samsung secondary drive in there, an M.2 drive. And so for audio production, as you know, you want to keep everything quite clean your installs and also where you save everything so at the moment I can actually have um, projects saved to a certain place and also samples and things like that so at the moment this has got a one terabyte Samsung drive which I'm using for mainly audio and things like that and it's also got a programs drive which is 512 at the moment okay at the moment you'll see just to show you sort of audio per performance on it one thing I had to do when I when I first set it up was um, I ran something called um, DPC Monitor. It's a free piece of software that you can get from Google. If you Google it, it's DPC Monitor. And it'll actually tell you what the DPC latency is. Now, don't get confused with audio latency, which is the delay of getting a sound into the computer and back out to here. DPC latency is more software, so it's drivers, how well the drivers and the hardware, hardware are talking to each other. If you have bad DPC latency, you can get clicks and pops in your recordings, and that's one thing, and the reason I swapped from the Dell, at the time when I was using the XPS, it did a BIOS upgrade, um, it was in a BIOS update, sorry, and I was getting a lot of clicks and pops, so I thought, well, this is built for games, it was worth taking the punt on it and trying it out, and I actually ran the DPC monitor on it, and it was all very good. One thing I did do... I disabled the a couple of things that I thought might um, cause DPC latency, which um, I'd research on Google, which were like the Ethernet port, the hardwired Ethernet port. I don't use that anyway because I'm using wireless. Um, other people say as well, if you switch off the wireless card in it, in any laptop, it will help for audio um, performance. Although I actually am not doing that at the moment. The only of a doubt well I'll get to downsides later so at the moment if you see I'm running 43 tracks of audio here which probably doesn't seem a huge amount but all of these tracks have got a lot of effects on them or well I say a lot we've got amp simulation we've got EQ and we've got reverb on that first one amp simulators are notoriously hog CPU um, and the same so the audio I'm using amp sims and then, what have we got on these? Sorry, I should have checked this project perhaps before. I'm using um, also a fair amount of VST instruments. So here I've got a piano. I've got some stuff from Heaviosity. 
I've got a fair few just on that one instance of contact there. So I'm using a fair amount of um, MIDI instruments, but at the moment I'm, I'm running 43 tracks of audio. And the audio performance is all right. You sometimes, with a laptop, I think you could, you can't with a PC laptop, it, you get the odd um, dropout or you get the odd glitch, but generally for recording it has been pretty solid, I have to say. Um, I perhaps should have run a bench test so you could have actually seen it, but I thought I'd just show you for real, in real life, what I'm running for it at the moment. Obviously all of these tracks aren't running up at one time. I've also got a lot of group tracks running there. So, I'm reasonably happy with the audio performance, I have to say. Now, so we looked at the good things, I thought, were the fact that it's got USB-A. It was a reasonable good price point. It came in under £2,000. For a, a laptop of that spec is quite good. I think it was because um, Razer were bringing out the 2020 model, so they were selling off the the 2019 model. Um, I'd say it's well built, so I, I quite like the build quality. The power adapter's, you know, is strong. It's well in there. It's a 150 watt power adapter, so it's it's not a massive brick, but I'll just show you the the actual adapter itself. It's relatively big, but it's quite good. It's all interchangeable as well, so. If anything goes wrong on the leads, you can actually change them. And these run on a standard kettle lead as well. So, with a standard kettle lead, I've actually made a slightly longer lead. But what I would say, the one downside to this over the XPX was the battery. Now, with the XPX, I could, the Dell, sorry, Dell XPX um, laptop, I could actually run, if I was doing a remote project, I could actually rely on it for recording a few tracks of audio or if I was working on something and I, was, um, I wasn't near a power socket I could actually run the project not great on the battery but it did work whereas this is quite power hungry I think it's 150 watt power adapter so it actually it really doesn't like working with audio unless you're only using a few tracks with the battery but overall I would say it's, it's solid built and I've, I've enjoyed using it so far but I wanted just to give you an update and show you what I was using for remote recording. So it's the Razer Pro 17 and it's the late 2019 model and so far I've been reasonably happy with it. Obviously people always put the comparison with a PC against Mac and I know a lot of people use the you know the Mac laptops and have no problems with audio recording but I prefer working in the PC based and enjoy working with the PC so that's why I've gone down this route. Okay, thanks for watching.